Welcome back to THB Sports Weekly. I'm sports editor George Bremer and we have quite a busy week ahead. The Madison County Volleyball Tournament begins tonight at three sites with a big matchup planned at Madison Grant. Alexandria is undefeated and ranked number two in Class 2A and the Tigers are set in the same bracket as fourth ranked Madison Grant. The hosts are also undefeated and it makes a really tough night for LaPelle who will be the third team in this group in this round robin group play pool. The other two sites are at Liberty Christian where a city championship of sorts will be determined. Anderson and Anderson Prep are the visitors there and at Frankton where Elwood and Pendleton Heights will provide the competition. The way the Madison County Volleyball Tournament works is pretty simple. Each of those three sites will play round robins two matches for each team at the site that will lead to seating that will set a bracket for Saturday at Elwood with play beginning at 9 a.m. Sometime around 1.30 p.m. we will crown a Madison County champion and there's a good chance that the Tigers and Argyles who will be among the favorites to take that title will meet again Saturday somewhere along the way. It should make for some nice drama and for a really nice alternative for fans looking for another sporting event outside of football this week. As far as the gridiron goes, it was a really busy Friday and thanks in part to Mother Nature. Several games were delayed, including Shenandoah, who ended up playing at 8 a.m. Saturday. The Raiders continued to roll, reaching 3-0 with a 52-20 victory against Centerville. Elwood and Pendleton Heights also picked up their first wins of the season. The Panthers improved to 1-2 with a 32-19 victory against CIC rival Madison Grant, while Pendleton Heights opened the HHC season with a 31-13 victory against Newcastle. But our focus this week is on LaPel. The Bulldogs ride a two-game winning streak into a big matchup Friday against Shenandoah, and we caught up with running back Will Jones, who ranks number three in the nation with 850 rushing yards. All right, welcome back here to LaPel High School. I'm sports editor George Bremer, and our guest today, LaPel running back Will Jones. Will, thanks for joining us. Thank you. How uh, how nice were these last couple of weeks? Not just to get wins, but you, you played a rival in Frankton, and then you played another area school in, in APA. So probably some guys on, on both those teams that you're familiar with. Yeah, I mean, um, I talked to them before we played them, and um, I mean, the whole game we were just you know giving each other, I mean, good job and all that. But it was it was really nice to get those W's, and uh, looking forward to more. Is it fun playing within the county because it's guys you grew up with? Yeah, it, it really is. Um, I mean, I, I talk to those guys all the time, like Frankton kids and all them, so, yeah. Will it be similar this week with Shenandoah? Are there guys over there that you know? I mean, I know a couple, but not as I mean, not as good as I knew Frankton. Or, but, it'll, I mean, it's, it'll still be fun, yeah. When you look at the tradition that the Raiders have had the last few years, how do you approach this week as an opponent? Well, I just know we have to play hard. Um, they're, a, I mean, they're a tough team, so we just need to, I mean, have a really nice practice out here. So, I mean, we'll be prepared. Is it that way though? I guess every week here, because this is such a challenging schedule. I mean, Lapel really likes to push themselves. So, do you have the same mindset because of that week in, week out? Yeah. Um, I mean, this is. I mean, this is going to be a tough game for us. So, I mean, we we work every. I mean, every day hard, every day in practice. So it's, no, it's really no different. This team made a statement last year, obviously winning a sectional title, pushing you know in, into the regional. Is it a chance in, in the regular season here to make a statement against an opponent like Shenandoah? Yeah. Um, I mean, Shenandoah is a good team. So I mean, I think if we can win against them, we can uh, beat anybody. What are the goals for this group this year? I know there were a lot of losses, but you look at the record now, you look at the performance the first few weeks, and uh, things seem pretty similar here. Yeah, um, I mean, we got a new quarterback, Levi. He's been filling Brady's shoes really nice, and um, Joe's been helping me out, and uh, our line's been doing an excellent job. So I think we, I mean, we're, we're doing pretty good. So, What are the keys to, to keeping a program running like that, to, to be able to bring in new guys but keep the expectations the same and, and keep the goals the same? Um, well, uh, just, I mean, our coaches just coach us up exactly how it was last year and uh, just I mean our team effort is pretty good so what will it take Friday night for this to be a successful game for for LaPel? 
Um, well, we gotta get, we gotta start out strong. We can't start out uh, weak, but um, we gotta go full go every time, every play, and um, and I think that'll that'll be good for us if we do that. All right, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you. Good luck. I want to thank Will for joining us. We also caught up with Lapel head coach Tim Miller. He talked about the Raiders and the unique challenges they represent. Welcome back here to Lapel High School. Our guest at this time is Bulldogs foot head football coach Tim Miller. Coach, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. It's glad to have you. Coach, uh, can you talk a little bit about these last two weeks and what it meant for this team's mentality to go and get two victories? Yeah. Um, it's been, it's been big to get those two wins. Um, you know, we thought we should have had one at Tri Central. Um, they're a good football team, and you know, we we made some errors. We're we're a young team, um, and made some errors up there, and ended up coming out 14 down. But you know, for a young team, we bounced back and got two weeks in a row. So it's good to have that. It's better to be two and one than zero oh and three. That's for sure. <laughs> you, you talk a little bit about week one, and, and it was a close game. Uh, but was it a situation where where you think if you could play them later in the year, it could be a different story? Yeah, you know, I think it could be. Um, you know, they're a good football team, but we had our, you know, we forced turnovers, we stopped them. Um, you know, we just had a little bit of problems moving the ball here and there. Um, our inexperience showed. So, but yeah, it could be a different story. I mean, there's no doubt we can play with them. You, get, you got another challenge coming up, obviously, on Friday in Shenandoah. At least you know what's coming from them, but how hard is it to prepare for that offense? Their offense is something else. Coach Widener does, I mean, a fantastic job up there, and his entire staff does. Um, you know, they're big up front. They are very well coached, fundamentally sound. I mean, we spent hours trying to find tip-offs or cues and haven't come up with anything. Um, they're a solid football team. They got to be, you know, I know they're ranked in the top five, I believe, but, you know, they're, they're in the top five for a reason. They belong there. I mean, it's a good football team. This community has always done such a good job of supporting this team. How important is that on Friday night? It is. Um, you know, Shenandoah is kind of a rivalry renewed. Um, you know, we lost them on the schedule there for a few years, but, you know, the people that grew up here, and there's a lot of people that grew up in LaPel that live in LaPel, um, you know, it's a rivalry game. You know, the part with a rivalry game is it's got to be competitive. Um, so, you know, we got to step up and play at their level. Um, and, you know, we hope to do that. Obviously, this is the start of a stretch really the rest of the year. You've got some really big time opponents coming up. You're going to go into a sectional that's really tough. In that kind of a regard, is it important to just improve week by week? It is. Um, you know, the, the schedule's a good thing and a bad thing. Um, you know, I think we showed last year that playing a tough schedule helped us in the sectional. Um, and obviously, we probably feed into the or one of the top to a sectionals in the state. Um, you know, we're getting ready to start week four and we got Shenandoah top five team. Triton Central has been ranked in the top 10 this year. You know, a 3A school in Rushville. Heritage Christian's a top 10 football team right now. Knightstown and then a top 10 team in Eastern Hancock. Um, so, you know, and then our sectional, I think, has got two or three teams ranked in the top 10 at least. So, um, you know, it's a tough road to hoe. I mean, you you got to step up and play. Otherwise, you know, it could be ugly some weeks. What's been the key for this young team to come in, though, and, and so quickly, I guess, adapt to the expectations and adapt to what the goals for this program are? You know, I think last year the, you know, winning the sectional helped quite a bit. I mean, these kids, they're young, but they work hard. Uh, you know, it's been a building process and, you know, this off season it wasn't anything for us to have after school 30 or 40 kids in the weight room. And that's, you know, we're missing the kids that play multiple sports when that happens and we're still at 30 or 40. Um, so really it's, you know, the kids' commitment. They've bought in um, and have been working hard at it. All right, thanks a lot, Coach, for your time. Good luck on Friday night. I appreciate it. In addition it. to that, that matchup, look for feature games between Madison Grant and Franklin, Anderson and Marion, Pendleton Heights and Greenfield Central, and Alexandria and Oak Hill. You can follow those and other results in our daily print edition here at HaroldBolton.com and on Twitter at THB Sports.